Mila, tell me some of your favorite stories that you like to read with your parents. Um, I like a story in um, my school. It's called The Book with No Pictures. Of course, The Book oh, with No Pictures. Really funny. The Book, the book with, with No, no pictures. pictures and um, more bears. Yes, the book, with no, bears. the book with no pictures is is pretty funny. It's pretty silly, huh? Yes, I like it. Okay, so we like silly stories. That's good. What about um, Shayla and Bella uh, and Lyra? What are some of your favorite stories? Let me make sure you're unmuted. Bella. Which one? Uh, let's have each one of you talk w at one time, so not everybody's talking together. Piggy and uh, Gerald. Piggy and Gerald? Uh-huh. Okay, what else? Elephant. Okay. Uh, uh, let's ask Juliana. Juliana, what are some of your favorite stories? Let me... Yeah. Go ahead, Juliana. What are some of your favorite stories? What's your most favorite story ever? The story of a wimpy kid. The story of a wimpy kid? The diary of Oh, the diary of a wimpy kid. Okay, excellent. And what about Lana? Tell me your favorite story. Could be one in Russian, could be one in English. What's your favorite story, Lana? How did you sleep? It's called, How Do You Sleep? How did you sleep? Oh, how do you sleep? Excellent, very good. And, and Spencer, tell me your favorite story. About spiders. Well, let's find out. We gotta wait for him to unmute. What's your favorite story, buddy? One story after he... My favorite story is... What's your favorite book? Is what? Five minutes. Um, I would. I think. Mm -hmm. Answer. Oh. oh my gosh. All right, Dove. What's your favorite story? Um, the book with no pictures. Um, uh, more bears and. Um. Okay, that's good. Yeah. No. And um, and Rami, what? Because uh huh. And Rami, what's your favorite story? The fish cry. Oh, the pout pout fish. No. No. Okay. Well, we'll come no, back. No, Papa. Mm. Uh, wait, Papa. Let me okay, think about it. Rami, are you there? Because. Are you there, Rami? I don't remember. The dinosaurs, they flew on parachutes. Oh, I don't remember that one. Well, we'll, we'll think of it later. No, Rami, are you there? Rami, tell us your favorite story. Okay. Sasha, I'm going to tell you your, my favorite story. Okay, tell me quickly. Snuggles. What is it? Snuggle stories. I mean, snuggle stories. Snuggle stories? Snuggles. Yeah. Okay. And Rami, what's your favorite story, buddy? Enemy, enemy pie. All of them. Enemy pie? Yes. That sounds interesting. We're going to have to check that out. Okay, you guys, great. We're going to um, read. We're going to talk about stories today. We're going to talk about how stories uh, are put together and why they're important. But we're also going, we're going to start by reading this story together. Does anybody know this story? Yeah. Show me a thumbs up. I see Juliana knows it. Does anybody else know this story? Mila, do you know this story? Yes, we do. I don't know the dot. No? Sounds like maybe Juliana knows it and maybe Spencer knows it. But we're going to go ahead and read this together. And then we will continue. Okay, so I'm going to mute everybody. I'll unmute you occasionally. But here comes the story called The Dot, okay? All right.
Can you guys all see that? Yeah? Okay, great. Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Okay, just leave that there, please. At the end. I promise I'll read it at the end of the lesson. Okay? Okay. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. How many of you guys have art class at your school? Yeah, you have art class? Okay, so you know what Vashti was doing, right? She was taking art class and then her teacher saw her blank piece of paper and she said, oh, a polar bear in a snowstorm. What was the teacher doing? Was the teacher making a joke? No. Yeah? Why is that funny, you guys? Why is polar bear in a snowstorm funny? What color is a polar bear? White. What color, what color is a snowstorm? White. So if you draw a white polar bear in a white snowstorm, what does it look like? Nothing. Just a bunch of white, right? It kind of looks just like a blank sheet of white paper. That's why the teacher thought it was funny to say that. So the teacher saw that she had a blank piece of paper and she made a joke. Okay? All right, continuing on. Vashti's teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. So Vashti grabbed the marker and she gave the paper a good, strong jab. Uh, there. Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper towards Vashti and quietly said, now sign it. How many of you guys, when you make a drawing, how many of you sign your name on your paper? Do you sign your name? Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. You, you like to sign your name on the drawings that you make? Very good. Okay, so the teacher told her to sign the paper, right? Vashti thought for a moment and said, well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see that what was, what was hanging above her teacher's desk, it was the little dot that she had drawn, her dot, all framed in swirly gold. You see that, guys? Her teacher framed her drawing of a dot in a big, beautiful gold frame and hung it on the wall. Hmm, thought Vashti, I can make a better dot than that. So she opened her never before used set of watercolors and she set to work. Vashti painted and painted a red dot, a purple dot, a yellow dot, a blue dot the blue mixed with the yellow and she discovered that she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting, lots of little dots in many colors. If I can make little dots, thought Vashti, I can make big dots too. So she splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot.
at the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's many dots made quite a splash. You guys see that? All of the dots that she was painting, all the dots that she was painting, they're all hanging on the walls like a big gallery, right? They've got all like, her beautiful... Like a big solar system. Oh, yeah, like a big solar system, exactly. They're all hanging there for people to see and appreciate. Vashti noticed a little boy who was gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. I wish I could draw. I wish I could draw, said the little boy. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Here's Vashti talking to the little boy who's admiring her dots. Man. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper and said, show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle and then she said, Please, sign it. All right. Hey, Bob, this really looks like the sun. It does look like the sun a lot. It's a beautiful dot. I love the color orange. So you guys, did you like that story about Vashti and her dot? Hang on, we're not going to read that yet. We're going to read that at the end, I promise you. We're gonna... No, we're going to have to read it at the end, yeah. after we finish our lesson. But I promise you guys, Dove wants me to read the book with no pictures. Whose favorite book is that? Mila's? I promise I'll read this, but I'll read it at the end, okay? Promise I promise. There are 15 because it counts all the people. I promise. So what did you guys think about the story of Vashti and her dot? What did you think about that story? Good. You liked it? Can you tell me in the beginning, what was Vashti feeling? What was she feeling in the beginning of the story? I didn't draw. She can't draw and how did that make her feel? Sad. It made her feel sad. Oh. And it made her feel sad. And then what, what happened after that she felt sad that she couldn't draw? What was the next thing that happened? What was the next thing that happened after she felt sad? Maybe Mila can tell us. What do you think, Mila? She saw this and she can make even bigger dots. Yeah, so she saw that she could actually make something interesting happen, but what was it that, that changed her mind? Juliana, maybe you know? Dots. Yeah, but why did she start making dots in the first place? Who was the, who was the person that encouraged her to make <laughs> the dots? The teacher. The, teacher. the teacher encouraged her, right? The teacher did something to help her. What did the teacher do? That's exactly right. The teacher framed her drawing. The teacher made her feel like her drawing was special, right? And because of that, it gave Vashti the confidence to make her drawings. And what happened at the end of the story? There were a lot of dots. And who, who came up to Vashti at the end of the story? A little boy. And did the little, how did the little boy feel? He felt sad. Why? Because he couldn't draw. For the same reason, because he couldn't draw, right? And what did Vashti do? She told him to sign his name. Exactly. She told him to sign no. his name. No. Just like the teacher told her to sign her name, right? She, she remembered how the teacher made her feel, that the teacher saw that she was feeling sad and she did something to help her 
feel better mm-hmm. to make her more confident and so she did, did the same thing for the little boy right they're not headphones very good so now we're going to talk about that was i really like this story because i think ah. it's a story that is it's it's about kids and it's about adults and it's about all of us and we all sometimes feel sad and we all sometimes need somebody to come and help us have a little more confidence right so i love the story and i want to talk about stories today just like this one i want to talk about how we put together a story right so let's think about that together for a second what is a story when we we listen to a story what does a story usually need to have what do we have to have in a story? Let's all brainstorm. Let's think about that. I want to see beginning, a middle, and an end. Very good. Are you Shayla, Lyra, or Bella? Bella. You're Bella? Very good, Bella. That's right. A story needs to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. That's perfect. Very, very good. And in the beginning of a story, who do we usually meet at the beginning of our story? Our character. A character. Amazing, Bella. That's absolutely right. We have to have a character. The story has to be about somebody, right? And what else did we learn in the beginning of a story? What else do we need to know about this character? I want to see uh, what it feels like. Uh, see yeah, exactly. I think... Um. I think Juliana said that we need to know what, how the character feels at the beginning of the story. Maybe we need to know what else, where the character is. What he's doing. What he's, yeah, what they're doing. Like, for example, we, when we um, met Vashti in the beginning of our story, the, the dot, we knew that Vashti was where? In art class. She was in school. She was in art class, right? Oh, and we also and we also knew that she was feeling frustrated and sad because she couldn't draw very well, right? Stop it. Okay. So we knew that for sure. So that's what we find out in the beginning of our story. We find out where our character is. We find out what's going on with their character. How are they feeling, right? And then we usually, as we move to the middle of the story, we usually find that our character encounters some sort of problem, right? Or some sort of difficulty, right? Like, for example, in our story about the dot, we found out what kind of problem did Vashti have? What was her? She couldn't couldn't draw. She couldn't draw, but what else specifically was she feeling? She wasn't feeling very, she, was sad. she wasn't feeling very confident, right? Who knows what confidence is? Confidence is when you, you feel like you can do something, right? Like you feel good about yourself, like you feel confident that you can uh, solve a math problem, or you feel confident that you can ride your bike, or you feel confident that you know the answer to a question in school, right? Yeah? So Vashti, in, the, in her problem, her conflict in her story was that she didn't feel confident, right? And who came along to help her feel more confident? Her teacher, that's absolutely right. Her teacher came along and helped her feel more confident, right? And then Vashti had to go through our more of the story where she used her confidence to create new dots, right? And at the end of the story, Vashti is different, right? How is Vashti different at the end of the story from the beginning of the story? She could draw. She could draw. That's right, Dove. And what else? At the end of the at she the end. She's another boy. How to draw? Exactly right, Bella. She's she's so confident now that she's actually able to help another boy and inspire him and make him feel more confident. So in the very beginning of our story, like you said, Bella, we have the beginning where we find out who our character is and how she feels and what her challenge is. And then we see her go through this problem and work her way through it, right? And then at the end of the story, we see how the character is changed by the adventure that she had, right? By the problem that she solved. Is that right? Yes. 
Sound about right? Okay, so what I want to do with you guys now, let's use that structure that, that um, Bella helped us understand, the beginning, the middle, and the end of a story. The fact that in the beginning, we need to have our character. In fact, let's, let's see if we can write this down so we all remember. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Okay, so here's our, who can read this word? I'm gonna write in caps. Who can read this? Let's make the puzzle. Story, right? So the first thing we need to know in the beginning of the story, we need to know our uh, character, right? And where they are and how they feel. And then we need to know what the, whoa, what is that? Dove story. This is amazing. Good. Perfect. And, and I want to show them. Show them. Dove. So, yes, this is my name. This is my story. And that's a dragon trying to fire um, um, a princess. And oh, I think I just found one. No. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep that in mind. Thank you, Dove. Okay. So we're going to try to tell a story together and we'll, we'll experiment. We'll see what happens and maybe um, we'll, something, something interesting will happen for us. So we need a character, right? Let's think of a character. We need a, uh, should we have a boy? What do you think, Juliana? Hold on, hold on. Sit there. If you want to participate, you need to sit down on this chair that I made for you right here. Come sit down in the chair and then you can participate in the story. Okay, then, then you have to let other kids speak. Okay, Juliana, you had an idea? Go ahead. I have stories I go here. We need, a, we need a character, guys. We need to come up with our character for our story. Who should we have? A boy. A boy? Okay, and what should be the boy's name? Let's, let's give everybody a turn to come up with ideas. Mila, what should be our boy's name in the story? Uh, you... What is that? Yuri. Uh, his name is Yuri? Okay, we have a boy named Yuri. So let's, I'm going to write these things down. A boy named Yuri. And where does our boy, we need to figure out where he lives, right? Where does he live? Maybe Bella can tell us. Where does he live? In the imaginary land. He lives in imaginary land. Perfect. He lives in imaginary land. And maybe Rami can tell us, does he live by himself or does he live with someone else? Tell us a little bit more about this boy, Yuri, that lives in imaginary land. Rami, are you there? No, I guess he's not there. What about Lana? Lana, are you? oh, there's Rami. Rami, this boy, Yuri, that lives in imaginary land, tell us more about him. Does he live with his family? Does he live by himself? Does he live in a house? Does he live in a tree? What, tell us more about him. Speak up. Speak up so we can hear you, Rami. Rami? Rami? Rami, tell us more about this boy. Speak up loud, Rami, so we can hear you. So, um, he lived with, um, with um, his mom. He lived with his mom. Perfect. Very good, Rami. Thank you. So we have a boy named Yuri who lived in imaginary land with his mom. Okay. And Mila, where did he live? Did he live in a house, in a tree, in a shoe, in uh, underground, in a cave? Where did he live? Uh, in a... Uh... Um... You can come up with your own idea. You don't have to take one of mine. <laughs> in a rainbow. He lived in a rainbow. That is a perfect place for a, a boy to live in imaginary land. There was a boy named Yuri 
who lived in imaginary land with his mom, and they lived in a rainbow. Now, ah! now, ah! show them. That's okay. So, but a rainbow has many colors, right? Did he live? Did he live in one of the colors of the rainbow, or did he just live on the rainbow? What do you think, Bella? Mm, on the rainbow. He just lived on the rainbow. Okay, on the rainbow. And how did he feel living on the rainbow with his mom, Juliana? Happy. He felt happy. Okay. Okay, great. He felt happy. No. I'm, I'm telling the story with our friends here. So you're going to have to just uh, draw somewhere else or you can get the spider yourself, okay? Okay, guys, so we have the beginning of our story, right? Mm -hmm. How do stories usually start? There's usually a way that, that stories start, uh, uh, like a phrase that, that um, is very, very uh, a common way to start a story. Who knows? Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Very good, Juliana. Very, very good. So once, let's, let's tell the story together. Let's tell the beginning of our story. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Yuri, and he lived in... rainbow. In, he lived in imaginary land on a rainbow with his... Mom. With his mom. And Yuri, was he a happy boy or a sad boy? Boy. And he was a happy boy. So there's the beginning of our story, right? We know our character. It's Yuri, right? We know where he lived on the rainbow in imaginary land. We know how he felt. We know that he was happy, right? Okay, but now we come to the next part of our story. We're getting closer to the middle, right? And now something needs to happen in order to change something in Yuri's life, right? So let's think about what that is. Maybe Bella or one of your sisters have an idea about what could happen in imaginary land to Yuri. What do you think? Can come. Yeah, a monster can come. Say that again. A monster can come. A monster can come. Okay, so let's, let's add that. So Yuri is living in imaginary land on a rainbow with his mom and suddenly a appears a monster, right? Okay, a monster, but let's figure out what kind of monster it is. Maybe, what's that? A big one. It's a big monster. What, is it, what does it look like? So it's big, and what is it? Does it have a color? It can change color. It's a color changing monster. Oh my goodness, yes, of course. Mm-hmm, it's a color changing monster. It's a color changing monster and it's going to come into Yuri's happy life. And I, you know what? I have an idea. Can I make a suggestion? You see, the color changing monster, he can change colors, but sometimes he, he runs out of power to change colors. And you know what he needs then so he can keep changing colors? He eats rainbows, you guys. This big monster, in order to give himself the power to continue to change colors all the time, he needs to eat as many rainbows as possible. What do you think about that? Okay, so here comes the big monster, and he wants to do what? He wants to eat Yuri's rainbow, right? Where he lives happily with his mom. Oh my goodness, it's a rainbow-eating monster. And maybe Dove can tell us, how does he eat rainbows? But how does this monster eat rainbows? Um, he gets his tongue out. Uh huh. And then he um puts his paws. Uh huh. And then he lifts up um a half of a rainbow. Okay. Um, and then um he puts his tongue under it. Uh huh. And then he sticks it um on the top mm -hmm. of holding that out. Uh huh. And then he. Uh huh. Um, and um, 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 does it into five parts. Okay, we're gonna stop. And then into six. Okay. And then he eats it. Got it. Okay, we're gonna stop there. So, Dove explained to us how this monster eats rainbows. He takes his big tongue 
And is it a, a tongue that's uh, like a big long tongue? Oh, is the it's, it's like from our house uh -huh. to um our house to the end of a reservoir. The end of the reservoir. Okay, perfect. So the, the monster has a super long tongue, and then he takes his paws and he grabs the rainbow and he puts it on his tongue, and then he starts to chew the rainbow and and chew it up into little pieces. No, first into, four, into four, first then, into four, then into six, then into six and, then he eats it. and then he eats, oh, he chews it, he chews the rainbow into even numbered pieces, right? Yeah. So for, first into two pieces, then four, then six, then eight, then 10. No, no. Starting with four. Only into six. Into six, and okay. And then he whips it. Uh -huh. um, Okay. Well, we'll come tell us. And then he does it like this. Uh huh. Then he puts his tongue down. Look. Uh huh. And, and then he eats it. And then he, and then he grabs it again. Uh -huh. And then he grabs it again. And he grabs it three times. And then. Great. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Okay. So we got this monster, and he's come to imaginary land, and with his big tongue and paws, he's going to eat the rainbow where Yuri lives and where his mom lives happily. And why is that a problem for them? Clean up this room. Because they live there. Because they live on that rainbow. What happens if the monster eats the rainbow? Yeah, that right? That's going to be a real problem. Okay, so what do you guys think needs to happen now in our story? Kill the monster. Yeah, we need to deal with this monster, right? If we don't do it, if Yuri doesn't do anything about this monster, then it's bad news for Yuri and his mom because their rainbow is going to get eaten, right? So in this story, Yuri needs to deal with this monster. Maybe he kills it, but maybe Yuri finds a way to uh, save the rainbow, but also to somehow do what maybe yuri can find a way to help the monster so it's not a monster anymore or so it doesn't need to eat rainbows i don't know what do you guys think mila what do you think i see you nodding your head over there what do you think mila go to the to make the monster not not eat rainbows just uh, make just um, find some color and um, Drink them. Oh, okay. So maybe maybe Yuri can help the monster uh, keep. Yes. And Yuri and his mom have powers. They have powers. Okay. What kind of powers do they have? Um, they have. They have all the powers. They're fast. They're strong. Uh, they could be invisible. Oh, that's they could, great. Um, oh, get this cleaned up. Um, other animals. They could fly. Okay. Of course they have those powers because they live in imaginary and land. They have um, magic sticks. Okay, great. So they have, sounds like Yuri and his mom have some special powers that they can maybe use to help themselves and, get and out of this. I got one of these. Sorry. And they eat this. They eat, um, um, they eat water, they, they drink water, mm -hmm. um, they're special, and they eat banana mixed mm -hmm. with red pepper, okay. and, um, they eat this kind of pizza, mm -hmm. it's delicious, it's not delicious for us, but they're magic, and they eat pizza, um, that's, um, has strawberries, meatballs, pickles, mm -hmm. In marshmallows, they're 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 special. That's why they. Eat. Fantastic, thank you, Doe. Okay, so let's come back to our story now. All right, you got. So we have Yuri and his mom. Hang on, Doe. We, we will, but we have to finish our story first. So we've got uh, Yuri and his mom that live on a rainbow in imaginary land. It's their home, and they're happy there. But then comes a rainbow-eating, color-changing monster. And what the monster really wants is the monster wants to be able to keep changing colors, but in order to do that, it needs to eat rainbows, right? It probably went to other places and ate rainbows in other places. So how do we 
help? How does Yuri and maybe Yuri's mom, how do they figure out how to deal with this monster, right? They, it's, maybe it's a big monster and we can't kill it because it's really, really big and scary, but maybe we can do something to help this monster and give it a different way to change colors instead of eating rainbows. What do you guys think? Yes, Mila. Yeah, it can drink watercolors or something green. Oh, it can drink watercolors. So maybe Yuri takes his art supplies, like his watercolor paints, and he draws a rainbow for the monster. What do you think, Juliana? Does he draw the rainbow or does he mix up a bunch of watercolors in, in cups? What does he do? No! What do you think? He takes the whole set and he puts it in the monster's mouth. The whole set of watercolors? Yeah. Okay. You know it's well, okay. Come sit over here with me. So, okay, so he can take the whole set of his watercolor paints and he can feed them to the monster. Instead of the monster eating the rainbow, the monster eats the paints, right? Does that work? What do you think, guys? It doesn't work? Okay, that's good. So Yuri tries something, but it doesn't work. He tries to feed the monster some watercolors, but that doesn't work, and the monster gets even angrier. Rawr! Where's our, Rawr! Where's our color eat rainbow-eating monster? Rawr! I'm going to eat no, your no, rainbow. No, 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 no. Here, um, so here's Yuri's mom. Uh -huh. Yuri's standing behind her. Mm -hmm. Here's Yuri's mom, and he's standing behind her because Yuri's real scared. Uh -huh. And here's the monster, yeah. and he could shoot fire. Oh my god, so he starts getting even angry and he shoots <laughs> fire. Oh, here. Rawr! I'm going to eat your rainbow, and I'm going to shoot fire. And Yuri tries to feed the monster watercolor paints instead of the rainbow, but it doesn't work. And the monster gets even angrier and even scarier. And now Yuri has to figure something else out, right? Let's have some, let's help Yuri out. Let's give him some more ideas. He tried the watercolors, it didn't work. What else? Um, we have to stop the monster from wanting to eat the rainbow. But the monster, we have to help the monster still be able to change colors. If we can help we the monster. Could, we could, um, we could, um, they could make some, a lot more rainbows with their powers, and so he eats those, not his. So they can make rainbows for the monster to eat? Mm -hmm. But then they have to keep making rainbows, right? Otherwise, the monster is not going to leave them alone. I know. Okay. And, and they have power, mm -hmm. and their special powers, if he eats one rainbow, there's another one right away when he eats it, there's another one right away on the same place. But is that a good solution? Because the then Yuri and his mom just end up constantly having to make rainbows for the monster, and they basically have to work for the monster all the time. They can't be happy then, right? Because the monster sort of becomes... No, they don't have to, like, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, They, like... They like could do whatever they want, and mm -hmm. they don't have to do anything for the monster. The power just keep going without them. Okay, so maybe what do you guys think if we say yes? It looks like Mila has a suggestion too. Yes, Mila. Um, they can get invisible again when the monster will not see them. When he will open his mouth to to eat the rainbow, they will put paint rainbows in his mouth and then another one, then another one until his tummy will get full and then he'll die. Oh, okay. So you think maybe they need to kill the monster in some way and then he's going to leave them alone. With paper rainbows. With paint rainbows. So the, if the monster eats too much paint... paint rainbows. They can make a, a rainbow on the paint paint it then they they they'll put it in on the monster's mouth and the rain and the colors will 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 make the monster be even white too okay that's that's a good suggestion juliana what do you think and he will change colors what do you think juliana um, 
So, so it sounds like we have a couple different suggestions. One thing definitely didn't work. We tried to feed the monster some watercolors, but that didn't help. So then Mila is suggesting that we feed the monster a bunch of uh, paper rainbows until he gets too full and then his belly explodes and he dies. And uh, I like Mila's suggestion. You like Mila's suggestion? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so we have to find a way to trick the monster into eating too many paper rainbows. Rainbows made out of paper. Is that right, and, Mila? Yeah, and they could be invisible. Oh, the mom and Yuri turned themselves invisible? Okay, so... Those are powers. They could do everything in the whole world. Okay, so Dove is going to tell us um, how Yuri and his mom... Uh, turn themselves invisible and feed the monster a bunch of paper rainbows. This is your part of the story now, Dove. We're going to take Mila's suggestion, and I want you to help us explain how that happens. Go ahead. So they get invisible. Okay. And then they have special powers. Okay. So they make rainbows um, with paper. Then okay. they paint them mm -hmm. um, with their brushes, okay. and then the monster... Um, He's not very smart, and he's going to think that that's the real rainbow. Oh. And he's going to eat too much of them, and then his stomach is going to explode. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Very good. So, yes, Mila, go ahead. And when he will open his mouth every time, they will put paper and paper and paper and paper and paper. No, no, not like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to keep putting paper rainbows in his mouth. He thinks... No, not, not, not going to put it in his mouth. Um, they're going to leave them, and then he's going to take them by yourself. Oh, I see. They're going to they're gonna leave them there, and the monster's not very smart, so he's going to think that the paper rainbows are real rainbows? Yes. Ah, and okay. That's... Okay, so the monster... So Yuri and his mom turn invisible and they make a bunch of paper rainbows and they leave them for the monster. And the silly monster thinks that those are real rainbows and he eats so many of them that his stomach explodes. Yes! Yeah? And then, Juliana, what happens after his stomach explodes? He dies. He dies and then what happens? And he is... He lives happily ever after. And, and he's a special monster and he has... Um, a lot, a lot of money in um, a special bag that is in his tummy, and then um, his stomach explodes, and then um, all the people in that imagine, imaginary land get a part of that money. Well, hang on a second. Before we get there, I, I like, Juliana, where you want to end the story, that they live happily ever after, but I think something else needs to happen before they live happily ever after, because the monster has, the monster does, used to do what? What did the monster do all the time? Eat rainbows. Eat, eat rainbows. So the monster must have a ton of rainbows already in its stomach, right? From all the rainbows that it ate before. So when it's fun. Oh, well, that's the end of rainbows, so he might have a ton of gold in his tummy. Yeah, yeah, there's gold at the end of the rainbow. That's right, though. That's the missing piece, right? Rainbows have, there's gold at the end of a rainbow. So when... Because the monster was eating so many rainbows, when his stomach exploded, all of the colors of the rainbows and all the gold came out in this big explosion, right? And it was colorful and um, a lot of colors and a lot of gold. And it was like... And it was a little stinky. And it was like a lot of fireworks. fireworks. Yeah, it was like fireworks of colors and, and gold, and it was a little stinky because it was in his stomach, right? But it's okay because you can wash that. And so the, all the people that lived in imaginary land with Yuri and his No, no, his stomach smelled super good. Oh, it was a good smelling stomach? Yeah. Yes. And, and, and the rainbows, he turned them um, there into really good cake candy cake. Um, rainbows, and then they could have eat them watching. Got it. Juliana? Can I show you my stories I made? Yes, please. Look, Juliana's got a story. <gasps> Whoa! I got seven. Hang on, let me, I'm gonna, okay, show us, Juliana. Um, this one, 
It's what vampires do. Uh huh. I have the gray squirrel and the black squirrel. How to behave when your parents are working. How to do realistic drawing. Uh huh. Those are all stories you wrote and illustrated? Whoa, those are all stories that you wrote and you drew the pictures for them? Yeah. Amazing. That's such a good idea. Maybe yeah. now could we do mine? Maybe we can we can all do that. We can write some stories on our own and draw some pictures like Juliana did. Thank you for sharing yeah, that. Could we do my okay. latest one? It's the latest one with the vampire? Yeah. It's a few pages. My longest one. I have a few chapter books too. Like it's too. really great. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay, so we it sounds like we finished our story and they lived happily ever after. And now Dove wanted to do what? Read the book with no pictures? Um, um first do my idea and then book. Okay, Dove wanted to share an idea with you guys. So I'm gonna get out of the way. No, no. Um, I want so you show my picture and then there was another story and then um, we we don't have time to tell the no, whole no, other no, story. Yes. Short sight, and then there was another dragon that was trying to get a princess, uh -huh. but then evil dad thought that he was brave, and that he was trying to get the dragon, but then he fired him, and he was and he was gonna scream. Ah! Uh -huh. Really, really loud. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, that Dove wants to wants us to tell another story about a princess and a dragon, and we can do that next time. Um, because no, I, it's gonna be him. this time and this time we're gonna do you still want to read the book with no pictures that's no. Mila's favorite book yeah but first do the idea we don't have time it's, no, it's, it's super super short okay once upon a time there was a princess and there was a dragon and the dragon came to eat the princess and evil bad came to save the princess but the dragon rah, breathed a bunch of fire and, on and him then he screamed, ah! and then he screamed ah! And, and that, that was it. And, the, and that's the end. And that's the end. Okay, let's read the book with no pictures, and then that'll be the end of our lesson yeah, for today. No, just what we don't have time for two books. Okay. Come on. <laughs> you guys know this book? Juliana, do you know this book? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're going to read the book with no pictures. All right. I promised Dove that I would do it. This is a book with no pictures. It might seem like... It's fun to have someone read you a book with no pictures. Uh, so it might seem like no fun to have you someone read a book with no pictures. It probably seems boring and serious, except here is how books work. Everything, what is it? Everything the words say, the person reading the book has to say, no matter what. No matter what. That's the deal. That's the rule. So that means even if the words say blork, even if the words say blork, <clears throat> wait, what? That doesn't even mean anything. No, not blork. Blurf. Wait a second, what? This isn't the kind of book I wanted to read. And I have to say every word the book says, uh-oh, I am a monkey who taught myself how to read. Hey, I'm not a monkey. And now I am reading you this book with my monkey mouth in my monkey voice. Hey, that's not true, I'm not a monkey. Yes, I am a monkey. Also, I am a robot monkey. What? <laughs> and my head is made of blueberry pizza. Wait a second. Is this whole book a trick? Can I stop reading, please? No? And now it's time for me to sing you my favorite song. A no. Song? Do I really have to sing a glug, 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 my face is a bug, I eat ants for breakfast, right off the rug? <laughs> what? <laughs> this book is ridiculous. Can I stop reading yet? No? Are there more pages? I have to read the rest? <clears throat> my only friend in the world, is a hippo named Boo Boo Butt. Boo Boo Butt. 
And also the kid I'm reading this book to is the best kid ever in the history of the entire world. On the whole oh, really? And this kid is the smartest kid too because this kid chose this book even though it has no pictures because kids know that this is the book that makes grown-ups say silly things and make silly sounds like, oh no, here it comes. face. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Please don't ever make me read this book again. It's so silly. In fact, it's completely and utterly preposterous. Next time, please, 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 please choose a book with pictures because this is just too ridiculous to read. The end. Bonk. Yeah, I don't want to say that. All right. Thanks, guys, for joining us. We will see you tomorrow. Bye.